Everyone. Um, in this video, I'm going to be talking about uh, arrays in uh, Rust. Uh, arrays are a primitive data type in Rust under a fixed size. So um, you wouldn't be able to, for instance, append something to an array after you've created, or you wouldn't also be able to remove something from this array. Um, so I thought to uh, get started with a, a very, basically a very bare bone project here, which I've set up with Cargo. And I've set up Cargo Watch as well, which is a really good um, tool if you want to be able to save your changes to your Rust files and be able to just save and see the results live, as you would do in many other uh, environments such as Flutter. So I've set that up. So if I write some commands here uh, and I press save, then it will automatically run cargo um, commands for me to be able to run my and compile my project and run my project. So that's the setup. And uh, we're going to get started just by looking how we uh, set up fixed size arrays. And the format for creating uh, an array in uh, Rust, a fixed size uh, primitive uh, array in Rust is uh, TN uh, or N. I think that's how the documentation says. And the T is the type of uh, your array, the type of elements that you're going to place in your array. And N is the number of items that are going to occupy uh, this array. Now, if you're constructing an array, for instance, uh, and you only have, for instance, three or four objects in it, you don't have to specify n because it's very obvious for um, Rust what um, yeah, the count of items placed in your array. So uh, to create an array, for instance, that has three items of um, that are integer types, for instance, it would be to say um, values is equal to one, two, three, just like that. And you can print the contents of this uh, array, uh, and let's say, uh, let's say values. Uh, so D like values. Yep. And I save. You can see one, two, three is printed now to the console. Now, um, if you want to be able to uh, access values in your fixed size, fixed size arrays, you would use uh, the format that you're pretty much use in almost any other programming language such as Python, Swift, Dart, um, you name it. Uh, you'd be able to um, use subscript just like this. Um, value one is this. Um, this basically points to the first item in the array in Rust. Um, indexes in an, in an array in Rust just like I think every programming language that I've worked with, all the indexes start with zero in arrays and collection types in general. Um, so you'd be able to type value one here. And I don't think we have to do a debug output here. So just value one because it's displayable uh, an integer. So we get the value one and then we can say index of one, which would be the second item since index zero is the first item in the, um, in the array. Uh, maybe if we change these values to something completely arbitrary, 20, uh, 12, and three, for instance, or five. Value one um, with the index of one would be the second item. And so in this case, we will get 12 printed to the console. And if I say value with the index of two, we get the number five printed to the console. So that's uh, a very easy uh, setup. Now you can also create a, um, a an array that is populated already, for instance, with the value of 30, but five times. Now, if you print this out um, with the debug displayable, then you will see that there is five repetition of the value 30 in your uh, array of i32s. Uh, you can change this, of course, um, but if you just do this, uh, your as you would expect, your array will be instantiated with only one value, and that value would be 
the i32 value of 30 in your array. Now, um, one common thing you may want to do with arrays in Rust is to iterate over them. And iteration is something that uh, you will hear in almost any other programming languages, uh, Python, JavaScript, Swift, Dart, you name it. Pretty much any language that has arrays has this concept of iterators. And in Rust, there is a good format for iterating over an array. And iterating over an array, if you're not uh, familiar with the term, is it means that you usually go from the beginning of the array to the end of the array. Um, and in some languages, you're able to break out of the iteration, and iterations are usually done lazily in that, um, well, not the entire amount of memory required for the array iteration may not be initialized during the iteration. Uh, and you would have to check the documentation of the uh, of the programming language that you're using to look if iterators are lazily done or not. Uh, but if you want to go through the items in this array, for instance, we're going to initialize it as we had it before with 20, 12, and 5. Then you can say for value in values, and then you can write the value. Value is an answer value. Um, and you can see we'll get three val uh, three prints uh, printouts to a console that says value is 20, 12, and 5. Um, and that's basically it. The iterator goes over the array and prints every item in the array for you. So this is, this is a good uh, syntax to remember with the 4x in something, some iterator. Now, um, when we, I mean, here we're looking at i32. So if I say i32, um, let's see, it's much i32, i32, 3. <laughs> okay. Uh, so um, these are i32 values. Um, but what if you have an array of strings? Let's see. If I say names, for instance, um, and I, I want to say, uh, let's say I have a name. And that name is a string from foo, or let's just call it foo. And I say bar is equal to string from bar. Then I place these in uh, in the array, um, and you can see names now is um, is an array of strings, uh, string objects of the length of two. Uh, now. If, if you're familiar with Rust, you'll know that uh, this is basically changing the ownership of these uh, local variables to names. So names is not going to own um, a foo and bar. So that if I try to say um, foo is, and then I say foo, uh, you see it says bar of moved value. Um, so we can't do that. We, we can't really place foo in names and then continue accessing food because the ownership is going to change uh, to the names array. Um, and there, there is a way to solve this, um, to change basically how you do this. You could uh, put references to these two variables uh, and then you can see that the type of um, names is still um, string, but it's a borrowed string. If we remove that, the type of uh, your array is now just a uh, string uh, as it was originally. So uh, depending on your use cases, you may want to just uh, refer uh, to just to a borrow here. Uh, you may want to do this or you may just want to actually move the ownership to your array. So keep that in mind um, in um, basically depending on your use case. Um, now, if, if you go back to the array that we had before, 20, 12, 5, you can also do comparison to, um, basically you can extract these values and do a comparison and do any other logical operation as you would do with any other um, value in Rust. Uh, so if you want to, for instance, compare the second item in the values array with the value 12, uh, you can easily do that. So you can say if, uh, you can say let second item is values with index of one if second item is 12 prints. This is what 
be expected. Otherwise, this is totally wacky. Um, and also, uh, oh, second item. Uh, can I say blah blah blah? Just call it like this, or we could just call a second item like this. Um, so you could either since this is just an integer primitive, you don't have to. We don't have to think about borrowing this value and uh, using it as like a reference. Uh, so you can literally read its value uh, using a subscript and then compare it to another value. But uh, you don't have to even create a second, uh, like a temporary variable. You could access it directly here. Uh, so this will do the job as it did before. So I can just save, run. And you can see this is what we expected gets uh, printed to the screen. Now there are three um, other properties of arrays that I usually use for Rust. And um, one of them is the length, which is len. Uh, so we can say print a len. Uh, the length of values is, and then we say values len. Okay. Um, that's for the length, and then you're going to see three printed to the console. And the other two uh, properties that I use on arrays in Rust uh, is uh, first and last. Uh, so I can say the first value is, and then I say first, uh, let's see. Uh, what am I using here? This is the option it doesn't implement. Okay, that's okay. Uh, first, and then I say last, uh, and I say last here. So these are two very important properties. And uh, as you can see, there are some example on how you can use them. Um, and you can print them to the console. And these are optional values. So um, you can use optional accessors to be able to uh, get their values using if let statement just like you would do in Swift. Um, so that's uh, that's um, for first, last, and length. Now, um, there's another uh, really good uh, subscript in uh, arrays in Rust is that you can access a range of values. For instance, you can say uh, 30, 45. And if I want to read, for instance, the third object in this array until the last. Since this length for me is kind of unknown at the moment, I can, because it can change at any time. Um, um, maybe another developer comes and adds another value here. So uh, I can say uh, third to last or third to last is equal to values. And the third item in the array has the index of two. And then I would just say, let's see. This size for values in zero cannot be known. I've come okay. Uh, let's see, and then I can borrow that maybe, just like that. Um, and then I would, and, and we can have a look at this third to last, and you can see that is is like a, a for reference to an array of i thirty twos. So then I can say for value in third to last, and then I can say print the value is, just like that, value. A save, brip, 5, 30, and 45. So you can use the dot dot syntax as well in order to extract a range of values from your arrays. Um, also, uh, I mean, this is, th this is pretty much the basics that you need to know about uh, arrays in uh, Rust. Uh, and of course you can uh, go read the documentations about different uh, operations that you can do with arrays, uh, but uh, this is the gist of it. You don't have to know so much about arrays to be able to get started. Um, and uh, yeah, just uh, go ahead, create a simple playground, um, put some code in there in Rust, and um, definitely read the documentation. That's my um, first advice for you. Uh, and try to have some fun with it. And please do let me know if you have any questions. I'll be more than Glad to answer your questions uh, if I can. Have a good day.